Yes, please write. Yes, please write. How much would you like to have in your bank account in in five or ten years' time? Be realistic. How much do you earn now? How are you going to do? And also, <coughs> um, think about have also faith. Have faith about what you're writing too. Big opportunities can open up for you. A lot of things have happened for you. How much would you desire that in five years' time? In five years' time, how old are you going to be? Remember that. Right? <laughs> how old are you going to be in five years' time? And then, what would you be doing in five years' time? Like that? So, how much would you we say that I would like to have in my bank account? 100 million? 50 million? 25 million? 30? Like that. Above that, 500 million. One billion. You know that five five years is a very it can be a very long time and it can be a very short time. Before you close your eyes and open it, five years has come. Look at this year that we started yesterday. How much would you love to have in your bank account as at that time? And then lastly, let's face reality now. Do you think what you spend most of your time doing now will lead you there? Yes or no. no? So if it is no, that means that you must of necessity, it's time for you to what? Make an adjustment. Are we together? Yes. So you see now, we are, we are talking reality now, right? If what I spend most of my time doing now is not going to give me my dream in five or ten years time, right? It means that I have to, of necessity, make work and adjust. Are we together? So, do we all agree with that? Yes, Fantastic. Good. So now, look at it. There are two classes of people in the workplace. The first set of people are called the proactive people. And the second set of people are called what? The reactive, the reactive people. Now, the proactive people are those that have a growth mindset. You understand? They have a growth mindset. Those are those that take responsibility. Now, you have created and designed a future for yourself by that 5 and 10 years. I didn't say 20 years. I didn't say 25 years. I only say 5 and 10 years. Now, look at this. The way life works is very mysterious. I tell you the truth. Are you with me? Five years before I left banking, I had a meeting like this on a Thursday, and it was about vision. And I told every member of the staff that day, I said, look at me, in the next five years, I will not be in this bank again. I will be somewhere. I want to be a resource person that you will one day watch on television. I will be doing the things that I want to do. A lot of my staff and my colleagues that they do wrote certain things that happened sometime in 2000 and, and uh, I think 2010 thereabout. That restructuring took place in 2012, and in the January of that 2012, right, my the restructuring happened February 2nd. Right? It happened February 12th. My second son was given back to February 2nd. So it was 10 days after my second son was given back to that, I lost my job. Now, my in-law, my mother-in-law was in our house doing Omugo. Are we together? So on that day, when I got to work and I could not log in again, and they say, well, this is it. I just went to my office and knelt down. I said, God, thank you. Thank you for how much I've contributed here. Just show me what next I need to do. So I took that my that letter and I went to my church that day. I went straight to my church and I went there and I knelt down and said, God, how I will move on now in your hands. But I made up my mind that I don't want to walk for anybody again. Are we together? Yes. Then I went back home. I had to hang around till around closing time. I got back home and called my wife into a closed door meeting and said, babe, this is what has happened. But well, you know that what? 
I cannot tell anybody this is between me and you. You know, in a family, you can have secrets within and secrets between. There should be no secret between, but there can be secret within. Right? So I said, this is what? Within. It will be between if I don't tell her the truth. Because as at that time, I'm not my dad. I'm the only one taking care of the whole family. I can't even tell my mother. So he was just there. My mom was just there. I said, don't say a word. Every morning, I will wake up like I'm going to work. But I'll go somewhere and sit down when it's time that work close, I'll come back just to manage the situation, right? Didn't tell anybody anything. That's how I wake up in the morning, dress as if I'm going to work, and I'll go out and I'll come back in. And that's only known to me and my wife. But you see something in January of that particular year, we bought bank shares. They were given to staff at a reduced price, right? To, to be able to what, pay back later, right? So I bought. Then they gave us a tuition of 1.7, 2.25 million worth of shares. You will pay 450. Then you will pay the rest over two years or so. It will be taken from your salary. So they have already been deducting from my salary on a monthly basis. Right? So for that January, I just made up my mind that I want to write off everything that I'm owing in January, not knowing that in February something was going to happen. So what I'm telling you now that what you are writing down, you might just be printing your future ahead of you. So some of you might need to look at the figure that you wrote as your bank balance and edit it. Upward. Maybe. Are we together? So you see now, whether you like it or not, those things that you have written down, if you are intentional about it, they will always guide you. You will always have a quiet moment where you remember what you wrote that you want to see in five years. And it will be guiding. It will serve as a guidepost for the way you behave and for the way you do everything that you do. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. So these are the ways in which you calibrate your desired future, both in the workplace and outside the workplace. Are we together? So this is why I saved the, the best for the last thing. So that you can have a complete transformation for yourself. You are not working with Nigerian Port Authority. You are not working for Nigerian Port Authority. You are working with Nigerian Port Authority. Ensure that you are an investment and an asset at your duty post such that you become valuable outside that place. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Yes, sir. So the moment you are unproductive, you are a liability to your future. And that's why we're saying that the reactive people blame everybody for their mess. And you see that now? Those who blame others for their woes are the reactive people. My question for you is, which of these two people do you want to be? So, your productivity in the workplace is a reflection of what? Your values. What do you value? I value excellence. I value, you know, integrity, quality, to a large extent. I value transformation. And that's the more reason why even if I was doing what I'm doing now for free, the tempo will not be less than this. Why? Because of my values. If you are, your value is Asamu Akashi, there's no problem. We shall see. You know what Asamu Akashi is? Yes. As you make it, you spend it. As you make it, you spend it. When the emergency comes, it will just, it will just ground you. No provision for emergency. No, we are not expecting emergency. It is called proactive living. And that's one of the reasons why when I was thinking of the name to give this CD, I'm still going to produce a book from this CD. From this CD, it's called Proactive Money Management. And that's why I wrote it that 13 mistakes you must not make with money. 
And that's the same if I'm not thinking of the future, for instance. When we did this program, I wouldn't have, have a recorded version of it. Do you know that everything that I said from Friday, I have it recorded as audio on my phone. I may not say it, but I will sit down and listen to it. Why would I sit down and listen to it? So that I will not be a parable of what I have done. You know, there are many people, you see, what you do has more impact than what you teach. Because what you do is an outcome. What you teach is an output of what you have learned. Are we together? And there's a big difference between outcome and output. Outcome versus output. When we talk about output, we are talking about the result of an activity. But we are talking outcome is the value of that. So you must be outcome focused. What will be the result for after these three days? Are we together? How does it affect my work? How does it affect my relationship with my boss? How does it affect what I deliver? How does it affect my life? How does it affect my wife? How does it affect my pocket? How does it affect my future? That's how come. Are we together? Output is not this thing that you're writing down like this. But what comes out of what you have written now is what is called outcome. Are we together? So everyone is absolutely responsible for ease or happiness or his misery. Are we together? So, and that's the reason why productivity is your attitude to excellence. Are we together? Carry out an audit on yourself today. What did I say? Audit yourself today. And do what? What is your quality profile? And ask yourself, what is my error quotient? Why? Where am I making mistakes? Where am I making progress? Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. So, yes. so that is the, so it is the attitude, your attitude to do what? To excellence. So we say productivity comes from cultivating the habit of excellence. Can you see that now? So the, 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 the center of gravity here is what? Excellence. When we say excellence, excellence is what you really do, what you what we are, what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. Are we together? Uh, uh, like some of us here now, because we are already used to it, that when we finish eating, we'll carry our this thing. I don't, I'm not waiting for someone to carry it for me. It doesn't mean anything to me. I can sweep. It doesn't mean anything to me. Are we together? <laughs> because it's already part of me. You understand? There are some people that cannot do it. Why would I be sitting down here and why would I be the one to carry my plate? It's just arrogance. That's where I see it. Are we together? If I'm a supervisor now and I'm passing here and I see something on the pit on the ground and I cannot pick it and put it in the trash can, I'm waiting for cleaner to come and sweep it and be dirty person. Are we together? Yeah. Sure. Good. So we said productivity is reconciliation of effectiveness or value delivered. Can you see that now? Reconciliation of what the effectiveness, the rightness of the value that we have delivered as compared with what? With the efficiency of the resources you used to confirm the vision and strategy of the organization. That is to say, if it is going to take 30 minutes to deliver a job, productivity will mean that I've done the right job within 30 minutes to support what the organization wants it to do. At that particular time. Are we together? Are we together? So yeah. that's exactly how it works. So productivity is a measure of output over input. It is what you put in that uh, it brings out. Then what it brings out, we now start to look at what came out. Are we? Is it all? Is what came out. Are we together? Right? Somebody said that pregnancy is the maturity of an investment that is nine months old. <laughs> Are we together? A little investment that is nine months old as a child. Can you see that? Now? Yeah. You see? So, somebody thinking like that will change. Remember, I told you about the counsel I told my daughter yeah. that they admire you is not a problem. Yeah. The problem is what they admire. And can they handle the damages that they will do to you? 
Do you understand? So that caused a provocative thinking that makes up. This morning, while I was driving out to school, she asked me a question. She said, um, Daddy, yesterday they caught some people cheating in exams. I said, and she said, so when you talk to somebody in an exam, is he also teaching? I said, why should you talk to somebody in the exam? Even if somebody talks to you, don't talk to the person. Because all the things you are supposed to discuss with the person should have been before the exam. In some schools now, they say it's team work. Eh? You understand? They call it team work. But the team should have worked before, before the exam. The generation. Are we together? You see it now? Are, are we together? Now, and another thing that they said, some people already got the questions before they came to the exam. I said, how did they get it? Say, ah, maybe their parents or anything like that. I say, oh, that is it. Don't worry, you people are not the same. Whatever, anything that you copy from somebody or you undertake fraud to get, it's not your own. Any results that you get by copy or giraffe, it's not your own. Are we together? Good. So we now said productivity, how do we, what ways do we measure productivity? You know, we have been talking about productivity, right? And we've been talking about service quality. So when we're talking about how productive your life is, is how you are going to serve your future. And how you are going to serve the people that depend on you. And even you yourself. Even you yourself. You are the first beneficiary of how you use your life. Pain is personal. I hope you know that. Yeah. Say, you know, pain is personal. I tell you the truth. People can help you to make a decision. But the pain is personal. Pain is personal. Pain is personal. True. Pain is personal. You know that celebration or success has many friends, but failure is an offer. Failure does not have friends. A poor person does not even have a family. A time came with me that I'm the one that is like the anchor of the family, sending everybody to school. When I got properly broke, when one of my younger sisters wanted to get married, my opinion was not even counted, it was not sorted at the point. I tell you the truth. I remember one of my uncle gave me a very, very logical counsel I will never forget it from. The man is late now. He used to be a banker. When I had worked for seven years, I, was, I had not married. I worked for more than close to 10 years before I got married. Now, when I had worked for seven years, he called me one day, he said, when are you going to get married? I say, Uncle, who all this responsibility? He said, look here, let me tell you something. It is the same people that you have deprived yourself for. They, are big, they, they will be the first people to mock you when you fail. He said, so, however you want to do it, be moving yourself forward while you are carrying them along. Do you what you can do. I'm telling you the truth. I will never forget that priceless counsel. I sat back and thought that it is true. But you see, when I got properly broke, my own kid sister wanted to get married. And they were like, whether he endorses it or not, I'll go ahead. But I said one thing. I said one thing. I said, no problem. Want to feel that my opinion does not count. Remember the days when my opinion counted. And for you to know that I didn't make myself the first in this house, with or without money or anything. Right? And if I take the position, if I wear the shoes of my father because my father is late, there's a blessing you desire from me. Of course. That day, somebody has to walk you to the aisle. If it's not me, and I'm not part of it, whatever happens in the future, my hands are not there. And I told my mom, she was said, don't, because of circumstances, lose your voice to do the right thing. You know, pressure can make people look like they don't know what they're supposed to do. And thank God that my mom said no. If your brother does not consent to this thing, we will not 
Right. And you know how life works. The guy that she was heads over heels in love with them. By the time I told her, give this relationship another three months and see. Before these three months expire, if you don't see the flaws in this guy, go ahead, I'll put my hand. And as God will have it, the guy manifested the kind of person that he was. And he was like, ah, thank God. Wherever you are, it's a privilege. And there's divine authority that that place gives to you. That's why if you are up, help other people to rise. Don't trample on people. Don't oppress people. Help people to grow. They will always remember you for it. They may never be able to pay you, but life will not rob you of what you deserve. Are we together? Yes, sir. So this is what it means. So what is it that shows that we are productive? It is that what? Services are preferred. What's my decision preferred? Eventually. Would your decision be preferred? Would your services be preferred? If they weigh you on a scale, what would you weigh? Are we together? Conflict is eliminated. That you are in a place and this no, you say you go to that office, they're not the quarrel for them. They understand themselves. Are we together? That's when there's productivity. Conflict is eliminated because there's a smooth interpersonal relationship and understanding of that. Everybody does what he's supposed to do when he's supposed to do it at the point that he's supposed to be exactly how it's to be done. Are we together? Number three is what expectations are met. Are we together? Then number four is that what benefits are received. Eh? Don't be a boss when it's time for appraisal. If they don't give you something, you will not appraise them well. <laughs> you know there are horses like that. You need to go and pay them and go and sort them before they will mark you anywhere. You don't need it. Are we together? We don't. We don't need it. And then we say solution terminates what? The problem. That's when there's productivity. Has this particular three things actually added value to you as a person as MBA? That is our report sheet. Are we together? Good. So, and like I said, I don't just teach job skills, I teach life skills. Is it obvious in our teaching? Yes. So, the extent to which resources are appropriately maximized. Right? If you stayed five years in a place, let it have 10, 15 years impact. Mm-hmm. You were talking of a man, the gate is still standing there. Isn't it? Every time they get to that place, mm-hmm. who comes to mind? That man. That's, that's a typical representation of legacy. Are we together? Uh-huh. Do you know something? MPA may never give that guy anything, but life will never forget him. Life will reward him in his own way. Are we together? So that's exactly how, how it is. So appropriately maximize without undue pressure on resources. You know, it is when you don't know what you are doing that you use spanner to be opening soft drink when there is opener. <laughs> So, resources for the future performance are proper compensation for contribution that consistently produce superior results. Are we together? So, productivity erosion and corporate cost. Now, what are the things that bring erosion? What is erosion? Erosion is what? Washing, washing. washing the wheel of what? Sorry. Oh, very good. And then we now have different types of erosion. And there are some that they call what? Oh, this is a brilliant class. <laughs> Gully erosion. So there are staffs that they are a gully erosion to the organization. They are there eroding the value of the organization, not adding value to it. The substance of the soil is for it to generate nutrients for the plants to grow and have fruits. So your attitude 
is the water. What are the agents of erosion? Water and wind. Yes. So your wind is your, your character is like a wind. The only substance that quenches thirst is what? Water. Nothing, nothing, nothing else quenches thirst like water. Imagine that you are like water in your department. When there is a problem, they know who to go to. No matter how bad the situation is, they say, when you get to this guy, consider it so. There are issues that when you want to talk about, they say, when you get to a problem, you get a map and solve. One day in our church, somebody met me and said, for God, I want for you. Why is that? When, when you make a suggestion, they will just take it. I said, because I thought it through before making a suggestion. Nelson Mandela said, the wisest man in the room is the last man to speak. Why? Because he's gathered all the intelligence. <laughs> Ruminating the right, yeah? And added his own gifts. See, because I thought it through. I've checked where we're going. I've checked where we are coming from. I'm also looking at what we have in order to get there. So when I'm making suggestions to you, I don't like calibrations. If you like, take it. If you like, don't take it. In fact, when I'm making a suggestion, I'll tell you the possible result, predictable results. Are we together? That's what is called being in water. So if you now have a bad character, you are what? Going to bring erosion to the value and the reputation of the organization. But uh, you missed a lot. Oh. Yeah. So, what brings erosion is what? Distraction. So, you can see the cheapest way to, can you see, just setting your money on fire. So, distraction is one of the most expensive productivity drains in the workplace. When you are supposed to be working, you are there distant and destined away. Pressing your food. Uh-huh. The moment you are doing that, what is happening? Work will be lying yeah. dormant. Are we together? Then the customer will come. When you suppose you promise, you don't need to come tomorrow. Uh, but you have not started. You know the danger about procrastination? Let's look at the danger of procrastination. Let's see how procrastination works here. If I'm supposed to mark 10 scripts per day, right? Let's say, okay, let's make it 100 scripts. Per day. Every week, my delivery is 500. Is it not? Yes, sir. So on Monday, 100, right? Yes. Tuesday, like that. Wednesday, 100. Thursday, 100. Friday, 100, right? Yes, now, look at what happens with procrastination and distraction. I'm distracted. I didn't do it on Monday. So I have minus 100. So that means on Tuesday, I have to do 200. So, unfortunately, on Wednesday, something happened. I didn't get to work on time. So I didn't start on time. I couldn't do it. I say I will do it tomorrow. So what happens? Minus 200. It now becomes 300. Right? Then on Thursday, I say, ah, this is a three days old. Oh, what will I do now? Ha! If I even start, what would 100? If I even start now, I cannot finish. On Friday, I will not do anything. That's the only thing I will do. Then you leave it on Thursday, minus 100. On Friday now, he has to produce 500. Now, he will not be able to produce 500 correctly. He will patch, join everything. He will walk, he will be fatigued, and everything. Even when he's tired, he will still be. You understand? You still be doing the work. So you find out that the error rates at this place is even possible. Eh? When it reach Friday and they say that, ah, Omo, no. it will take an angel to produce five hundred to mark five hundred scripts on Friday. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so you just abandon the thing. Say you know what? This your work is too much. Oh. I don't think I'm able to mark this script again. Please give it to another person. <laughs> That's what happens. All what is salary is worth 
Monday to Thursday, zero. The organization loses. Can you see that now? That's why distraction is expensive. Right? Because look at how distraction is expensive now. Distraction is what? Giving attention to what is not priority. Can you see that? Huh? The thing that does not concern you is the one that you face. You have left your own. You have faced another thing that does not have anything. Look at another definition of distraction. It's a giving permission to what is unprofitable to your future to control and enslave you now. Eh? Very crazy. You, you, very crazy, man. <laughs> you, are, you are reviewing the thing. Yes. You see, that's, the, that's what happens when you customize your knowledge. You won't find this definition in any test. You will not. You will not. You will not. And that's how that's how res what res your resourcefulness on the job can, can do for you. Are we together? So you see that even if I'm not here, if you read this definition alone, it can make you to sit down and be checking and be asking yourself, <laughs> this thing that I am doing now, does it have a future? Are we together? So, so we said these are the energy and resources sapping, resource sapping activities, investments, and engagement. Are we together now? Yeah. Eh? Aha. Uh -huh. I would. We talked about two hundred thousand competing for attention. One for investment, the other one for your son's school fees. I mean, is it not? Yeah. Eh? We say which one will you take? Then you began to say before you say yes or no, before you say school fees or before you say investment, you check can the school wait. The investment will it yield? Understand me? What if the investment fail? What will happen to school? Can you stand the embarrassment of your son sent away from school? Are we together? And they know that you are working somewhere. Now, are you ready to undertake that selfishness? Can you see how decision making can be tough? Mm -hmm. It's basically dependent on what is profitable to you. Are we together? Good. So we now say also when employees are simply supplying their major power to minor activities or non productive matters. Can you see now? You carry somebody that has been very resourceful to a particular department who has not trained another person out of that department, you collapse the department. So, let's do a little exercise. Now, according to research, the things that distract people most in the workplace number one, the internet and your phones. Now, this is a big question. When you want to track distraction effectively, you ask yourself, how long does it take to recover from distraction? Look at the option. For some people, it's what? For instance, as we, are, as we are here now, we are doing training. You understand that? And yesterday, uh, Mr. Shenge came in and said that, okay, we have to pause this now and go and take picture. Is that a distraction? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Is it? Yes, sir. Now, you know that the flow that we had, yes, we were coming. Yes. And when we went to go and do, the picture and came back, it will take us a little time to get back to that direction. Are we together? That's exactly how it is. Eh? Uh -huh. It's just like that. Eh? Uh -huh. So, some people, it will take them 30 minutes. Some people, 45 minutes. Some people, one hour. Some people, some people. <laughs> Have you ever been reading a book and then something happened? You close that chapter and you, you never read the book. You never read the book. It's not that you, you came back and continued. That, that, I mean, that, that you never went back to that book again at all. So it happens. So you see, so you look at it. A study was carried out in Microsoft and the report shows that what? It takes an average of what? 15 minutes. You understand? To recover your attention from what one minute is interrupt us. That means we are doing something now. They interrupt you one minute before you return back to that level of concentration. I read the story of a man of God who was studying, and he said he was studying and was having serious revelation about a particular thing. And then all of a sudden, he remembered that he had an appointment. 
and then he just said, Ah, God, I have to go now, I have to go and be that this thing. He said he never returned back to that thing again. He said, till he is standing here, despite how disciplined he is, that he never go back to that frequency again. Say, oh, God, okay, that thing is more important than the one I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> so, currently, it takes about 23 minutes minimum for one minute interruption. Can you see that now? They have calculated it. The most distracted animal on earth is the goldfish. And it takes nine seconds. And they say human beings, because of the smartphone now, are getting more distracted than the goldfish. Yes. Check it now. Just check it. There are some people that, if their phone is spoiled, it's as if they are sick. The day that um, uh, Facebook and Instagram went, <laughs> went, down, went down, down, some people were. Some, uh, some people were. Look at the world has ended for some <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. That, you know there are people that cannot leave, cannot cannot breathe without their phone. Yes. They cannot keep their phone for two days. I mean, is it one day? Some people one hour seven. Some people sleep before the phone and wake up to miss the phone. It's as if they change them to the phone. Yeah, it's so bad. My phone is very useful for me. It's very very useful for me. But I've gotten to a point that. Sometimes in the morning, I want to do private study. I want to work on myself. I, if the phone is on, do you know that I still used to feel like I am with the phone? So if I want to study, I will have to off the phone. So when I off the phone, it's as if I'm off it in my mind. Then I'll be able to focus. That's how bad it is. So I tell my kids that, you see this phone people are clamoring for. It's bad for you. I told my daughter that. Or do you see OSSC results? You can buy phones. So, I'm telling you the truth. Say, forget about it. You finish your SSC. When you enter university, you get a phone. In fact, if you are not even careful yourself, this one you graduate, you get a phone. You say, ah, ah, you say, it will be that bad. I say, yeah, no, I want you to be mature to be able to handle it. You understand? I used to say something don't know what will kill you. Don't be emotionally entangled to what is not working. So people have investment. You see, the investment is crashing like this. You are watching it. Ah, it go better. It go better. It go better. Till you finally crash. <laughs> they will change tomorrow. They will change tomorrow. Till they finally finish you. The day you catch the thief, cut him. Immediately. Cut him. Because if you don't cut him, you will be the one to regret later. Thank you. Are we together? That's exactly how it is. You see, I used to trade forex. One day, I entered a wrong entry. The, the market was going against me. <laughs> I was watching my money burning down like this. Ah, it will go back. So, and it will do like this and come down. It will do like this and come down. It will do like this and come down till I lost three thousand dollars. Quickly withdraw. You understand? But if the first time the thing did like this, wow! I say, oh my, let's see no go. You just <laughs> cut it like that. You have reduced your losses. Yes. The thing you realize that what you are doing is not going to move you forward. Checkmate it. That. Are we together? So look at it now. So that's how it is. So when, what distracts you most at work? That's a personal question now. Talk. <laughs> see, Madame Brown said, oh, she's saying I'm not she. Can you see that? That's the thing. Are we together? Can you see that? Is it bossy? Now, the question is to you, what is it that distracts you most at work? <laughs> eh? Four. Four. See. This man said four. Yeah? This man said bossy. Then? Colleagues. Colleagues. <laughs> Yeah, remember we talked about productivity sabotoirs. Are we together? Uh -huh. There's another person saying phone there. Yeah. Yes? Uh -huh. yeah. The same thing, right? Uh -huh. Your own, what is it, Oga? Sometimes visitors. Sometimes, okay? See visitors on one day, visitors. Yeah. And then you, what is it? Phone. Uh -huh. Friends. I say colleagues. Colleagues. Uh -huh. Voila. Friends. Okay? No one, no one. Phone. Woman. It's been a one day. It's been a one day. Because it's been a one day. It's true. You know, we may distract you. You know, there are some ladies eh, that in the corporate environment, hmm, they, they, they have a way of raising the dopamine effect in men around that place. They know that they are fine. And they will just. 
exhibit that beauty around. They will make you know that they are around. Those cause confusion. They will show themselves. You understand? And you, there's no how. You are a man now. You have blood and water flowing inside you. There is no way you see good thing. And you might pretend not to have seen it. But there are many people that, are, that will have second and multiple looks. And some people will not stop when they look. They will follow up. You understand? So they can leave the job and follow up. It's even worse when the person, you're thinking of it when the person... Yeah. Yeah, you that, see it now. That's another major see, that's part. Another that's another that's another another major. Oh, the person has gone, just yeah. like a perfume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is yeah. there in your subconscious. And that's the dangerous yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. You are working, the work is not working. <laughs> <laughs> your mind is working. Your mind is just somewhere there. Do you understand? So remember what we did in perception, right? Remember what we did in perception. It's like that. There was a story told by um, this man, Mike Bodok. He said there was this lady in the office. It's a sanguine by normal characteristics. Talks, excited, just come, chat everybody up. Hey, what's up, this and that, you know? There are some people like that. They make the place happen. Are like we together? They make it lively. The, the lady would just come second. She was not so good on her desk with her administrative task, but she had a way of getting everybody excited at the no dull moment. So he said, the one day he came, he came to the office. He said, they are sacked the lady. He came to the office. He said, ah, ah, why is everywhere looking like a symmetry like this? Nobody's talking, everywhere is moody. He said, what's the problem? When they started asking questions, they said, ah, the person that used to make the place lively, they have sacked the person. The man said, why? They say our appraiser was very bad. He said, go and bring her back. <laughs> go and bring her back. Go and bring her back. Because her absence is making productivity. You, you are, you are judging the lady by paperwork. But the emotional balance that she brings to the office is making other people work. So there are some people that they may not know how to do work, but their presence makes others work. Are you see that now? So you see now, in judging and appraising those kind of people, you must be able to weigh the impact that they bring. Do you understand me? So people, they are moral boosters. Are we together? They are moral boosters. You understand me? So what the work that you are, you are, you are checking is not actually the work she's working. Are we together? Are we together? So that's what happened. So you see, we live in a distracted world. Only ruthless commitment can make you productive. Can you see that now? So unless you are extremely difficult, yes? Sir, I, there is one other thing I want to say. Okay. So just sir. as you mentioned this latest issue. Yes. There is one major distraction in MPO. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it affects everybody globally. What is that? That's why I said it's a rumor. Rumor. Let's say no. This is true. Let's say what? Let's say salary will increase. Yeah. Let's say. Don't say. Let's go. And you're now and you're now working for the salary. Let's say. If I don't reach out. So you start spending the money. It's a major distraction. You start spending the money. <laughs> the MD don't sign. Uh, it's, a, it's a rumor. So that's an additional one there. So rumors too can also be a source of what? distraction. Good. So you see, how long does it take for you to return back to your level of productivity after being distracted by your phone, by your workstation disorder? Can you see that? By your email, by people, by social media, by yourself. You know you can distract yourself, right? And others. So all the things that we have mentioned, they are or they have been captured here. So you can see that. The, the, our text or our substance or the value of our, our materials is not far from what is obtainable there. Are we together? Yes. Good. So we see it now. Now, how do you get into distraction free mode? This is boss mode versus what? The work mode. Work mode is the fact that you don't allow distraction. You focus on the needful, not the attractive. Can you see that? There are a lot of things that are attractive but are not needful. It's just like say impulse buying, right? You just see something like this, you didn't plan for it, <laughs> or this thing, buy, you buy it. It's not part of the budget. Yes. Are we together? So there are a lot of things that are attractive but destructive. Are we together? So if the work mode focuses on this, you learn to avoid the diseases of the disease of if the disease of if is what I showed you here. 
the disease of Eve is the disease of yesterday. Eve means last night. Right? The disease of Eve means last night. What you were supposed to do yesterday, you suspended it in today. And when it came to today, it became too heavy for today. So you add accumulation of yesterday and today, tomorrow. By tomorrow again, you suspended it. You now have three days accumulation. By the fourth day, you have four days accumulation. When you get to Friday, you say, oh, no, this work, this work don't tire me. Now lie. Are we together? So what we said that distraction makes you focus on what is attractive but what? Destructive. So you look at how fine it is. Now look at it. Remember what we mentioned. Now, if in a day, eh, MPA loses two hours, starting two and a half hours to distraction, a rumor happened and everybody was distracted for two and a half hours. Now, if the cost per hour, how do you know your cost per hour? How much is your salary? How many hours do you work in a month? When you divide it, you know your salary per hour. Are we together? It's called math, financial mathematics of your time. Right? The financial mathematics of your time. So if I'm working